good day students in this lecture we are going to see the noise performance in am systems we know that am can be classified into conventional am which we will name will be naming it as dsb fc and then dsb double sideband suppressed carrier then we have ssb sc so while analyzing the noise performance in am systems we have to make sure that we study the noise performance in am receiver using envelope detect detector that is noise performance of dsb fc then noise performance in dsb sc receiver using coherent detection and noise performance of ssb sc receiver using coherent detection now in this lecture let us see the noise performance of am receiver using envelope detector whenever we say am it specifies that it indirect uh, indirectly means that it is dsb fc that is double sideband full carrier this is the noise model this block diagram is the noise model of am receiver using envelope detector if you look into this the input to this noise model of am receiver is the dsb fc wave which is double sideband full carrier wave we are representing this as s of t now this signal whenever it is being transmitted by a transmitter it passes through the communication channel and then it reaches the receiver so as it passes through the communication channel definitely it gets affected by noise and the noise that gets added to this input signal which is dsb fc am is called is represented here as w of t and this w of t we are naming as front end receiver noise now once this signal with noise with additive noise reaches the receiver the very first block in the receiver is going to be a bandpass filter to remove all the noise component almost all the noise component has to be filtered out in the first step before feeding the signal into the receiver so the very first block in the receiver is going to be a bandpass filter what it does is we have to design this bandpass filter in such a way that the bandwidth is so large to pass all the input signal through it and it should not be too large to pass the noise components so the main purpose of bandpass filter is to filter out almost completely the noise component present in it but anyways the noise cannot be completely filtered out a few bandwidth of noise a few frequency of noise will also be allowed to pass through the bandpass filter along with the signal so here the output of bandpass filter is x of t we have represented it as x of t which is s of t plus some noise it's not the complete noise because the complete noise that gets added with the signal we have represented it as w of t now this w of t is will not be available at the output of bandpass filter the reason is the bandpass filter has filtered out most of the noise components and only a few frequency of noise will be allowed to pass through it so here we have changed the representation and we have represented the signal using the same s of t now the noise is represented as n of t where n of t we can name it as narrow band noise it's called n b n narrow band noise because the bandwidth of this noise is very less most of the noise frequencies are filtered out by the bandpass filter so the bandwidth is very less that's why we are naming this noise component n of t as narrow band noise once this process is over then we are passing this x of t into a envelope detector we know that envelope detector is an am detector am demodulator which extracts the original signal from the modulated wave so envelope detector will extract the original signal it performs demodulation and it extracts the original signal and at the output of envelope detector we will be getting the message signal and if we keenly observe the terms that we have that are available at the output of this envelope detector 
it will have a dc term along with the signal term okay and this dc term has to be removed and for removing this dc term which is available at the output of envelope detector we have a dc blocking capacitor so purpose of this dc blocking capacitor is to remove the dc term produced at the output of this envelope detector so at the output of envelope detector at the output of this uh, dc blocking capacitor we are left with two terms one is the scaled version of the message plus definitely there will be some noise we cannot completely remove the noise so there will be some noise okay and when, this is the noise model this is called the noise model of am and whenever we study the or we uh, we analyze the noise performance of am or every fm receivers our main aim is to find the term called figure of merit it is called as fom figure of merit and this figure of merit can be obtained by finding the ratio of snr at the output to the snr at the input this is how we will get the figure of merit so our main aim is to find the snr at the input as well as the snr at the output then we can find the figure of merit with the help of this formula okay now let us go into the derivation so here we know that the input to this model is dsb fc wave and this dsb fc wave can be expressed mathematically with the help of this equation which is s of t is equal to ac into 1 plus ka m of t cos 2 pi fc t okay this is nothing but an am equation normal am equation in time domain and here whenever we multiply this ac and cos of cos 2 pi fc t inside we are going to get ac cos 2 pi fc t plus ka ac m of t cos 2 pi fc t and if you look into this this will be the input to the receiver now our first aim is to find the signal to noise ratio at the input let us go into it input signal to noise ratio which can also be named as pre deduction signal to noise ratio or channel signal to noise ratio and this is called pre deduction because before feeding the signal as an input to the receiver we are performing the we are finding the signal to noise ratio at the input of the receiver that is why it is named as pre deduction or channel snr the input is dsbfc we know that this is the equation for dsbfc we have taken this there are two terms here the first term can be named as the carrier term because it completely has the carrier values ac represents the amplitude of the carrier fc represents the frequency of the carrier the second component is called as information bearing component and here you have ac which is the amplitude of the carrier and ka is called amplitude sensitivity and m of t is the message information which gets embedded along with the carrier now we have to find the signal to noise ratio at the input how will you find the signal to noise ratio at the input in general signal to noise ratio is ratio of signal power to the ratio of noise power signal power to noise power is nothing but signal to noise ratio so what we are going to find now signal power at the input noise power at the input then we will get the signal to noise ratio at the input okay let us find the signal power first there are two terms here we are going to find the average power of the first term and the second term separately and then we are going to sum it up the first term as we to as i told you it is nothing but the carrier and average power of the carrier is given by see power we know that power is v r m s square by v r m s by root 2 the whole square by 2r in general power formula is v square by r so power is v r m s by root 2 the whole square divided by r this r value usually for simplicity we are considering it as 1 r is nothing but antenna's resistance we can take it as 1 
ओके सो पवर इज वि आर एम एस बै रूट टू द होल स्कोयर वि आर एम एस इज द आर एम एस वोलटेज नव इफ यू लुक इन टू दिस फर्स्ट टर्म द वोलटेज टर्म हियर इज एसी सो एवरेज पवर आफ कैरियर इज गोयिंग टू बी एसी बै रूट टू द होल स्कोयर सो एसी स्कोयर बै टू द नेक्स्ट इज एवरेज आफ से टर्म एवरेज पवर आफ से टर्म इट हेज एसी The all the terms that are related to the voltages here are AC, KA, and M of T. So it becomes AC square, KA square, by two into P. This P it represents the average power of the message. In general, always the average power of the message signal will be represented as M of sorry uh, P. Average power of the message signal will be represented in general as P. So we have written the average power of the information bearing component as ac square ka square p by 2 now input signal power is nothing but the sum of average powers of carrier and information carrier is ac square by 2 information is ac square ka square p by 2 so sum of these two ac square by 2 is common we have taken it outside and it it becomes 1 plus ka square into p this is signal power Next, our aim is to find the input noise power. And for finding the input noise power, the formula is noise power spectral density into bandwidth. And noise power spectral density. For finding the noise power spectral density, we will be usually using white Gaussian noise as a standard noise. And for white Gaussian noise, the power spectral density will be like this. It's going to be constant, and its value is n naught by two. Throughout the range of frequency, so this is the power spectral density plot for white Gaussian noise, n naught by two. Since we are considering white Gaussian noise as a standard noise, PSD noise PSD is going to be n naught by two into bandwidth. Bandwidth is here we are calculating the noise performance of AM receiver. So for AM the bandwidth is going to be two FM. That is why we have written the bandwidth for bandwidth uh, value as two FM. Now this two and this two will get cancelled, and you will get n naught into FM as the noise power. So now we have obtained the input signal power as well as the input noise power. Easily we can find the input SNR. So SNR I is PSI by PNI input signal power by input noise power, which becomes AC square. One plus k a square p by two n not f m. So one part is over. The next part is we are supposed to find the output signal to noise ratio, which we can name it as post deduction S N R. Now this output noise per noise ratio, signal to noise ratio is nothing but the uh, ratio of signal power to noise power at the output of the receiver. So completely at the output of the receiver, what is the signal power? What is the noise power? The ratio of this is called as the Post deduction S N R or output S N R. Okay, and for finding this post deduction S N R, we have to go block by block. We have to find the output of each block available in the noise model. We know that the first block in the noise model is nothing but V P F. Then it is envelope detector. Then DC blocking capacitor. So we have to go step by step. First we have to find the output of V P F. Then output of envelope detector and then output of DC blocking capacitor. From which we can find the output signal power and noise power. Okay. So here let us take the output of V P F. Output of bandpass filter. We have represented in the noise model the output of bandpass filter as x of t, which is s of t plus n of t. n of t is called as the narrow band noise. Okay. Now we have to substitute s of t and n of t here. We know that narrow band noise can be expressed in rectangular form using in phase and quadrature phase components with the help of this equation. So equation for narrow band noise is. n of t is equal to n i of t cos 2 pi f c t minus n q of t sin 2 pi f c t. I represents in phase, q represents quadrature phase component. Okay, so x of t becomes first we have to write the equation of s of t. S of t is the A M equation. So it is A C 1 plus K A M of t cos 2 pi f c t plus this n i term minus n q term. So, if you look into this first term and the second term, we have cos two pi f c t as common. 
these two terms have cos 2 pi fct so what you can do is take this cos 2 pi fct as a common you will get ac plus k ac k a m of t plus n i of t minus this term remains as such n q of t sin 2 pi fct okay so this is the output of the bandpass filter next we are supposed to find the output of envelope detector see envelope detector is one which is going to detect the envelope which is going to detect the peak value of the modulated signal or in other words mathematically we can say envelope detector it detects the magnitude of x of t so at the output of envelope detector we are going to get the magnitude magnitude of x of t okay so x of t the equation is this we have to find the magnitude of this equation of x of t we will get y of t which is the output of envelope detector so y of t mathematically can be expressed as magnitude of x of t which is for finding the magnitude the formula is its root of a square plus b square so it becomes a is this term and b is this term so a square plus b square this is the output of envelope detector the next is we are going to make a, make use of an assumption in order to simplify this <coughs> so assuming signal to be greater than noise whenever we assume signal to be greater than noise we can make the following approximation which is nothing but root of a square plus b square can be approximated as a when a is greater than b so if we apply this approximation we can retain only the first term of the previous equation and b can be neglected b is nothing but nq of t and that term can be neglected so y of t can be approximated as there are three terms in the first term which is ac ac k a m of t plus n i of t this alone will be left if we apply this approximation next if you observe this this ac is called as the dc component it is the dc term and the second term since it has this m of t we can name it as signal this is the information the third term is nothing but the noise term that too it is in phase noise component okay now out of these three terms we have to remove the dc component and for removing the dc component we have a dc blocking capacitor in the noise model right so when we apply this y of t as input to the dc blocking capacitor at the output of dc blocking capacitor we will be left with y naught of t which has only two terms this first term signal term and the in phase noise term and we can name this signal term as scaled version of m of t because actually we need only m of t but it is multiplied with the, the, these two terms ka and ac so its amplitude is scaled that is why we are naming this as scaled version of m of t plus this in phase noise component so we have got signal and noise at the output of the receiver we have to find the signal power and the noise power the signal power at the output can be taken as ac ac square ka square by 2 for m of t usually will be representing it as p so it becomes ac square ka square p by 2 noise power the formula is psd of noise into bandwidth which becomes n0 into fm so we can find signal to noise ratio at the output which is ratio of output signal power to the output noise power which becomes ac square ka square p by 2 n0 fm so having determined the signal to noise ratio at the input and output we have find we can find the figure of merit usually it will be represented as gamma so signal to noise ratio at the output by signal to noise ratio at the input is nothing but figure of merit substitute the corresponding ratios here and simplify this we are left with ka square p by 1 plus ka square p but usually if you observe this value of figure of merit it should be at least equal to 1 and it should be above 1 it can be above 1 also but here if i substitute the ka value as 1 this ratio is going to be less than 1 and it will be usually less than 0.5 so the, we can say that for DSB FCAM the figure of merit is very less and it will be less than 0.5 and so the noise performance is very poor for DSB FC the noise performance is poor thank you